Thanks for tuning in. I'm Laura Beth Ezell, your host for HXGN TV. And today joining me, I have Dirk Seegers with Proximus, and this is Ken Jones with Chattanooga EPB. Now they are here to discuss with us how to successfully implement a fiber optic infrastructure. Now, we appreciate your time in joining us today, both of you. Now, if you want to give your customers the highest internet speeds, uh, maybe add some new services, and meet growing customer demands, then fiber is the way to go. Um, uh, so how do you go about, though, planning, designing, and building a new fiber network? That's what we're going to learn about from these two who are going to share some tips and tricks uh, to help other companies considering this move to fiber as well. And we were just up here discussing, gentlemen, about how fiber has become more of a household name. We're hearing more about it. Um, uh, Dirk, first just briefly uh, describe about your company that you represent. Thank you. So um, Proximus is uh, a telecommunication and ICT company in uh, Belgium. Mm -hmm. We operate locally in the national market and we operate internationally through an affiliate which is called BIX, mm -hmm. which is in fact a, a, a global, a top global player in voice and data communications. We provide uh, services uh, to our uh, residential customers, to businesses and to public authorities. So uh, fiber is a key enabler for us to implement our strategy which is a we in fact we have a, a growth strategy. Our company wants to grow mm -hmm. and fiber is the enabling technology to make this, this strategy happen while we are trans uh, transforming towards a digital services company. So okay. to bring better customer service and that's where fiber fits in. All right, Ken. Thank you for having me. Um, EPB is in the city of Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're the fourth largest city in the state of Tennessee. Uh, we were actually a municipality that was established in 1935, and we've been serving electric power ever since then. Mm -hmm. um, here recently, in around 2000, we started telecommunications division to where we started deploying fiber. Um, and we quickly understood that that was a groundwork for a lot of great things mm -hmm. to come. Um, we'll talk a little bit about our smart grid technology, our triple play services that we provide. Um, we currently have a 600 square mile service area and we serve approximately 185,000 customers um, across nine counties and some parts of North Georgia. Okay. All right, well, Dirk, um, we'll start with you and talking about uh, Proximus. You are currently in the middle of a 10-year fiber rollout. So tell us about this initiative to deploy fiber to the entire country uh, of Belgium and why. Yeah, so as I explained, the, um, the strategy to grow the company and to bring a better customer service investments in our network is crucial. Mm -hmm. So we are investing about 10 billion uh, euro in the next 10 years to deploy fiber nationally. We have a population of 10 million people wow. and we want to reach 50% uh, uh, of the households and 85% of all the businesses we have in Belgium. We want okay. to connect them towards the to fiber. So um, in that context, um, the company has a six million, a six billion uh, revenue in mm -hmm. terms of, uh, of, of, okay. of telecommunication services, and we have an EBITDA of, of two million, which is a very healthy situation. So, um, fiber, we are support is supporting the growth strategy, as I, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, to give you an idea on what we do, we have to connect uh, every two minutes. We have to pass a home on fiber for okay. the, next, the next period. Wow. So that's that's the ambition level we have. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it. Okay. About okay. So why did you choose Hexagon's Intergraph G Technology Fiber Optic Works for this project? Yeah, well, it was selected a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, today we have about 200 designs done in okay. Hexagon's platform uh, for, for fiber, detailed design. And we have selected the platform because it's, uh, it, it uh, gave us already out of the box a number mm -hmm. of, of assets. Uh, the standard modeling for fiber infrastructures is already available in, 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 mm -hmm. the, in the platform. Uh, additionally, the, the user interface was quite interesting for the end users to, to use the, the platform. Uh, so that's a key differentiator. It's also standard technology. It's open technology, it's, uh, and it's important for us. We can integrate this technology with our ordering systems. So today, our fiber inventories mm -hmm. are integrated with the ordering and provisioning systems, which is, in fact, an extremely good experience from an end-to-end -end point of view. We can activate and, su and provision subscribers directly connecting towards the inventories and doing the sales and the ordering in one step. So okay. that's, in fact, the big differentiator. Wow, okay. And um, how will this project benefit 
Proximus's, Proximus's customers and the services you offer. Offer we, you know, you talked about this was about growing business, right? Yeah, correct. So we are offering uh, TV services. Uh, we mm -hmm. see the future needs of fiber uh, deployment growing. We see 4K, 8, 8K TV. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. see gaming, so customers are asking for more bandwidth, mm -hmm. more capacity, more speed, and stability. And that's where fiber fits in perfectly. So in order to deliver this extremely good customer experience, mm -hmm. we are deploying fiber towards our customers. Okay. So the customer experience is goal of our transformation. Right. Okay, customers are your business. Well, Ken, we'll switch mm -hmm. to you. EPB is known for providing uh, its customers with one of the fastest internet speeds in the U.S. Uh, you were saying y'all refer to as the gig city. That's correct. Uh, so tell us, you know, how have you guys achieved this? Well, you heard Dirk talk about it a little bit, right? And um, with today's bandwidth requirements and whether it's gaming or it's architectural mm -hmm. moving large files from a business perspective or it's um, just really that user experience, um, we have learned that the fiber optics allows us to be scalable along with creating some reliability to our customers. So with the fiber optics network, the bandwidth is basically unlimited, right? It really depends on the equipment that you have on each end of it, which mm -hmm. is going to um, let you transmit data as fast as the equipment will allow you, right? So um, what we know today is fiber optics is a lot faster than most equipment that's out here. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, the bandwidth capabilities of equipment continues to grow. Right. Um, at one point, we would have never thought about one gig or 10 gig or right. 40 gig or even 100 gig. And you can just imagine what's coming down the pipe next. So the fiber optic infrastructure allows you to be scalable and ready for whatever that new and latest technology is to come. And you, you're touching on that, you know, just tell us how you've used fiber optic works to manage this network, mm -hmm. build it, uh, and, and the benefits it's brought. Absolutely. Uh, let me give you a little bit of history of a background so you can really yeah. understand the in-depth of how well the um, FLW fiber optics network system um, really is helping us. Um, like I told you earlier, we started our telecom division back in the early 2000s. And that was really just a pilot program. Mm -hmm. We were really focused and concentrated on our downtown area. So we had a real dense population of small businesses, mm -hmm. some medium business, some large business, right? And we had a small deployment of fiber. And the way we used to track that was through Excel spreadsheets and Visio. <laughs> <laughs> and you can only imagine how tough right, that was, yeah. right? And that was really on a small scale, right? So as we learned that, you know, if we want to move on a bigger scale, mm -hmm. this system just will not work. We needed something that was more efficient, that allowed us to be more productive, that we can integrate with other systems and platforms that we had within our company. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we realized that Excel and Visio <laughs> wasn't the answer, <laughs> right? Um, so, Probably not uh, easy on the eyes either. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> um, so we, we really had to find something, like I said, that was scalable, that was reliable, mm -hmm. more efficient, that was robust. And, um, and, and even with our electric system, we had a frame, te frame technology from Hexagon, then we moved into GTEC and then we moved into GCOMs and then into FOW, which okay. allowed us to do a lot more than Excel and Visio. Right. We can keep track of our fiber, we can um, have connectivity models, we can integrate it with other systems throughout our company. Um, a, a really great example of how we use FOW today is, let's say we have a fiber trouble somewhere, right? And we go out and we test it with the OTDR and we say, hey, the problem is 10,000 feet from where we are, mm -hmm. two miles or whatever that case may be, right? Well, we can actually go inside of FOW and do a trace functionality and say from this point to 10,000 feet out is where. Well, it'll put an X on our fiber cable or where that problem is, and then we can tell our field service guys, hey, go to pole A12345, mm -hmm. and you should find that problem within 100 feet or 200 feet. And about 98% of the time, we're right spot on. Wow. Okay. Great. okay. Yeah. yeah. And let's talk about the benefits to the customers. I mean, what benefits has this brought to your customers? Uh, well, well, you think about um, in today's world, everybody really wants everything right now, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. You know, our, our online ordering with like Amazon Prime has spoiled us. We order something <laughs> today, we get it in two days, right? So, um, no, no, we want the drone to bring it to us. That's exactly in, right. And it's coming, right? Now. Yeah, so, you, you, know, you know, think about in that instance that I just told you about troubleshooting yeah. the damaged fiber, right? If a fiber is cut, a pole is hit, or a squirrel chews on the fiber, or, you know, a tree falls and breaks the fiber and damages the fiber, and we have to find out where that problem is. Well, in that meantime, our customers have an outage. They're experiencing right. an outage, and they want their services back up. 
you know, they, they want to be able to have that quality of life that they have. And so with just these functionalities to allow us to troubleshoot more fast, mm -hmm. to be a lot more efficient, um, track our entire network within the system and um, be able to share that not only within people in the office, but also mm -hmm. with people in the field. It just gives us that flexibility, the mobility, and all the things that we need to provide our customers with the best possible customer service we can provide them. There's obviously a lot of probably companies like yours that are out there considering a move to fiber. Mm -hmm. What's some advice that you can give to them? Well, I definitely do not use Excel or Visio. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely the first thing, right? Um, but really, understand what your network is. Mm -hmm. Understand how you're going to integrate with other systems throughout your company. Um, so we have workflow management systems integrated. We have our electric outage management system, our fiber outage management system. We have our electric distribution management systems. Mm -hmm. We have our mobile workforce. We have our workflows. All those things are integrated with GTEC, right? So we can understand how do we make our processes better. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at your systems and how you can be more efficient, how you can um, increase that bottom line, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it's all right, about. Right. Um, you want to make sure that you have systems that work together, that are easily integrated, um, that are scalable, reliable, um, and, and just all those things that help you increase your revenue growth and be able to provide the absolute best service you can to all of your customers. Yeah, I totally agree with that. We we have used the fiber introduction to really transform the way we work. Mm -hmm. So we had a history with copper uh, networks, and while introducing fiber, we have rethought the processes, mm -hmm. the way we work, the organization, the structure, the systems. Mm -hmm. You are consolidating multiple fiber systems into one system now. Mm -hmm. So that's the opportunity that fiber can help you to transform the business you're doing, in fact. And that's it. Uh, okay. What about future plans? Do you guys have any future plans of how to use your, you know, your fiber networks or build them more, Dirk? Yeah, we will for sure continue. We still have a long way to go, right, at least 10 years, years to go project. away. So we have a, a lot of work. I think what where we are still looking for in, in, in terms of evolution is to bring in more agility uh, in, into, the, uh, into okay. the processes and into the, uh, the fiber construction. It goes from design, mm -hmm. so being agile in design, we, have, we had to rethink the way we designed our, 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 our networks because it, the theory, it was done in it within theoretical mode. While you go into the field, mm -hmm. you come across problems that you say, well, we didn't know that. So this that's a lot of agility which is needed. So we are now working on how to industrialize mm -hmm. the, uh, we, have, we have gone through a big learning curve and we are now seeing how can we industrialize, automate more uh, designs, automate more uh, service and provisioning uh, tasks. So that's the uh, roadmap we have ahead of us to, to really industrialize fiber deployment. Okay. And I think for us it's um, really, how do we continue to find ways to use the fiber optics network? Mm -hmm. um, only, not only do we provide a 10 gig service to residential and businesses, but we also have one of the smartest electric grids in the country as well, right? So how do we take those technologies and work with people like Oak Ridge National Laboratories, Cubatech, um, maybe even Dirk's company, and other companies throughout our country and throughout yeah. the world, really, and do some research and development? Let's yeah. see what is the next great thing that we can do um, with all the automation and the um, bandwidth requirements mm -hmm. that we can actually um, provide um, within our network, mm -hmm. then the opportunity is really limitless of what we can do. One of the major projects that we're working on now um, is with some of our substation stuff. There's a company called Cubatech out of California that they're working on um, quantum key distribution, which is a electric, um, I'm sorry, not electric, but a encrypted protocol to transmit SCADA transmissions. So where okay. you don't have to worry about it being hacked, it's almost yeah. unhackable, right? So we're working with companies like that. We're working with companies like Oak Ridge National Laboratories where we're putting sensors in our substations and this sensor is providing all types of data to us. So if somebody comes within X amount of footage from our substations, then we can tell are they having some type of cell phone frequency or they having this type of frequency. Um, we're also working with how do we use drones to actually um, inspect our yeah. electric lines, inspect our fiber cables, um, maybe some hard to reach areas, back lots, you know, up steep mountains and things like that where yeah. we can actually take a drone and fly it up and grab yeah. that data and collect that data and figure out, hey, we need to do some maintenance here, we need to do some vegetation trimming here or just all different types of um, opportunities right. that are before us. Right, okay. In the long term, it's our fiber 
track is on customer experience. And right. We have deployed now fiber in seven major cities in Belgium, and what we see is that the net promoter score of fiber versus the older networks on copper is significantly better, and that's the way to go with fiber. Absolutely. And as you say, we're, if you have fiber, it's unlimited in terms of capabilities. That's exactly right. Well, thank you both. You both shared some great insight into you know, two different countries even, Absolutely. and worlds of, 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 of working in a solution like this and implementing a fiber optic network. So I thank you both for your time today. You're welcome. And welcome. thank, thank you, you for joining in. If you would like more information on this topic, you can go to hexagonsafetyinfrastructure.com and to watch additional episodes, please go to hxgnspotlight.com. Thanks for joining us.